Our 12 News Storm Tracker is monitoring an Arctic cold front making its way south. These are some images of the ice that the storm already left behind in Oklahoma. The storm set to approach by Monday, giving us potentially some of the coldest weather we've seen in years. Right now we're looking at two different forecast models, and if you look at this, you can see some freezing rain, sleet, maybe a little snow in the mix as well. Let's get straight to our expert, Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn. Patrick, you've been watching this for days, uh, giving us the early warning. What are you thinking at this point? Well, I think it's going to be mainly uh, freezing rain and sleet, unfortunately, this go around. This is the uh, there is the potential that this could be a serious uh, scenario for our area if it indeed materializes. Uh, this would be certainly disruptive to travel and uh, after this passes would be issues for, uh, well, a uh, very hard freeze coming up by next Tuesday. This is the uh, GFS model showing a significant uh, round of freezing rain and sleet. Uh, this could begin uh, late Sunday night into Monday morning and go through the day, uh, not getting out of the 30s if this is right. Uh, this is the newest uh, run of the Euro and uh, there could be a mix of rain and sleet and freezing rain here in the Triangle. And I think it's going to be mainly uh, sleet up in the lakes area. Otherwise, here's the issue. We're going to be watching up towards the cloud level. We'll start off with snow, follow that line. We go above freezing. Those snowflakes uh, basically melt at 10,000 feet. And then as it continues to fall, it then goes down to uh, below freezing at the ground. That is a freezing rain scenario that we're looking at because of the temperature profile. We need these temperatures to be all below freezing for the snow to reach the ground. But because there's a warm layer between five and 10,000 feet, this looks like freezing rain and sleet this go round. Right now, the front is stalled just north of uh, Jasper to back over around Houston and temperatures coming up after the front goes through tonight. Yeah, it's a little faster is the big slide and we will be into the 40s the mid to upper 40s in the triangle by sunset tomorrow. More on that chilly forecast coming up on 12 News. All right, folks, we know there's still a lot of uncertainty at this point with the forecast, but some home experts are encouraging you to prepare now. The temperatures could really cause some problems for your pipes. 12 News reporter James Grant shows us how you can protect your property. Melanie Staley with Premium Plumbing says it's better to wrap your pipes ahead of time before it's too late. Staley says any type of insulation you can find at your local hardware store, such as peel and stick foam insulation, should do the job in protecting your outdoor pipes against the extreme cold. Staley also recommends Southeast Texans drain any water from outdoor hoses ahead of this weekend. She says it's best to cover your hose bibs. That's the part that connects your water hose to your home. If you don't have a faucet cover, Staley says you can still use a towel or cloth to try and keep it warm. It's also smart to turn your sink on slightly, just a slow drip, to keep a little water moving through the pipes, which can help prevent pipes from busting. But if a pipe does bust, the first thing you want to do is go get the water turned off so it's not moving or flowing anymore. At six, I'll go over some tips to make sure your heating systems are ready to go and working properly as we await a potential Arctic blast. In Beaumont, James Grant, 12 News. All right, folks, we've made it easy for you to stay on top of the changing wintry weather conditions. Get your phone and download the 12 News Now app. Click settings, notification settings, and then severe weather alerts. From there, you can customize your location. You'll want to turn on the severe weather alerts, the watches and warnings, and have the red badge notifications turned on. That way you'll get everything you need right there on your phone. We have big vaccine news for the region tonight. NRG Stadium in Houston will soon become a mega vaccine site. It's part of a partnership between the state and the White House to build three community vaccination centers in locations including Houston, Arlington and Dallas. Together, the sites will be capable of administering more than 10,000 shots per day. According to a news release from the White House, they expect the sites to be up and running starting the week of February 22nd. New tonight, Southeast Texas vaccine hubs have already administered nearly 3,500 doses of COVID vaccine. These numbers are from the close of the business day yesterday. Now, as you can see on its first day, the city of Port Arthur administered 535 of its 2,500 doses. The city exceeded its goal, which was 500 shots uh, yesterday. We're tracking new hospitalization numbers for you from Jefferson County tonight. The numbers have gone down since our last report, but ICU beds remain full. COVID patients make up roughly 42% of those in ICU. 
and a little over 16% of the patients in regular rooms. Regionally, COVID patients make up more than 41% in ICU. Very similar numbers uh, to what we're seeing in Jefferson County, 16% uh, of the COVID patients in regular rooms. So the region's overall COVID hospitalization rate remains around 19%. Opening arguments continued throughout the day in former President Donald Trump's second impeachment trial. The House impeachment managers making it clear that they believe Trump was not an innocent bystander in last month's Capitol attack. ABC's Faith Abubi has the latest. This case is much worse than someone who falsely shouts fire in a crowded theater. Lead House impeachment manager Jamie Raskin opening day two of Donald Trump's impeachment trial for allegedly inciting the January 6th insurrection, digging at the heart of the former president's defense argument that he's being punished for political speech. It's more like a case where the town fire chief, who's paid to put out fires, sends a mob not to yell fire in a crowded theater, but to actually set the theater on fire. Democrats using their allotted eight hours for the day to lay out their case in chronological order arguing Trump's betrayal of his oath of office began long before the deadly insurrection. President Trump's conduct leading up to January 6th was deliberate, planned, and premeditated. And when the violence began, the House impeachment manager saying Trump did not stop it. Instead, the former president's election lies culminated into a call to action on January 6th. Democrats are trying to steal the White House. You cannot let them... The impeachment managers appealing directly to the senators, witnesses of the attack now seated as jurors, unveiling never before seen videos of the riot in attempts to give new insight into the extreme violence and risk those inside the Capitol faced. Officer Goodman passes Senator Mitt Romney and directs him to turn around. Trump's defense team not expected to begin their opening arguments today but yesterday defended the former president's free speech rights. We can't possibly be suggesting that we punish people for political speech in this country. Faith Abube, ABC News, Capitol Hill. A breaking news alert tonight. The NBA is now requiring all teams to play the Star Spangled Banner before games. This comes after the Dallas Mavericks decided not to play the anthem before the first 12 games of the season. The owner, Mark Cuban, made that call. It had gone unnoticed because there are no fans. Well, that changed Monday night. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has since announced a Star Spangled Banner Protection Act. Cuban has released a statement explaining his decision, saying that uh, the Mavs, quote, respect and have always respected the passion that people have for the anthem and our country. But we also hear the voices of those who feel that the anthem does not represent them, end quote.